Start spreading the news. Nikki Nasty's got something to say. Hi guys, me, I'm back. I have things to say. It's crazy. It took me like three weeks to form a single thought uh, with the few brain cells that are left in my head. I was dropped as a child, and that's my excuse. I wasn't actually dropped. I actually just fell, but that's the same thing. I love this setup. Tell me you love this setup, all right? Right now, tell me you love it, okay? Validation, I need it. As some of you both, both, there's two subscribers. As some of you all may know, as some of you, some of you might know this, some of you may not. Hold on, I need to be taller. Okay. As some of you may know, I need to change up my content in order for the few brain cells that I have left to be happy. And something that I've admired for a long time is video essays and commentary people. I love listening to people talk about other things, except if you were ever one of my college professors, then you don't count. I'm just kidding, if you're one of my college professors, what you said was so interesting. You know that saying that like when you go over to a friend's house and, and they have snacks, it's like better because it's free, like their snacks taste better. It's the same concept with education. It just tastes better when it's free. When you have to pay for it, it just, it doesn't hit the same. I've been talking about it for a while, how I want to dip my little toe Reddit, behave yourself. I want to dip my little toe into the video essay world. Anyway, this is my version of that. I want to talk about a topic that I'm very passionate about, which is why the it girls quit. You know what I'm talking about and you know who I'm talking about, okay? If I say it girl, who do you think of? Stop, don't say me, okay? I don't think that I'm an it girl by any means, okay? Like, at all. My mom thinks I'm an it girl, uh, but that's because I'm her only girl. I'm actually her only child, so I am the it girl of her world. The two main women that I really want to talk about in this video is Emma Chamberlain and Best Dressed because everyone knows Emma Chamberlain and Best Dressed, okay? Both of these it girls have quit YouTube and social media to a certain extent. I relate to both of these girls. I was a fan of both of these girls. I'm the middle age between both of these women. In the last three weeks, while I was trying to form a single thought, I was thinking a lot about why these two women quit and Stranger Things. I was thinking a lot about Stranger Things and why the upside down looks like it literally has endometriosis. I'm worried for it. But I was thinking about why they both quit. This could all be wrong. This could all be speculation. I've never spoken to either of these women. I don't know them personally. And you probably don't either. This could literally all be wrong. And I'm not claiming to know the ins and outs of their life at all, only what they decide to put out on the internet. But I do relate to them a lot. And I do see myself a lot in them. Not because I tried to copy their style, you know, throughout my few years on YouTube. <laughs> what? That'd be crazy. It's not like every other YouTuber does that too. But anyway, I see myself a lot in those women and I can relate to a lot of the experiences that they decided to share online. So as a baby it girl, I feel like I could give some insight. Why have the it girls quit in the past? Why will the it girls continue to quit? Who will quit next? Why the hell would you quit the best and easiest job in the world? And don't they owe us an explanation? In true YouTuber fashion, I did want to mention that today's video is sponsored. So let's roll it. Today's video is sponsored by Project Makeover. Project Makeover is actually collaborating with Queer Eye, which is really exciting, especially because June is Pride Month. If you don't already know, Project Makeover is a match three online puzzle game, which I will absolutely smoke you in on any given day because I'm addicted to it and very good, so. It also has a narrative fiction and a storytelling element within it. So in the game, you can design, dress up, renovate, decorate, which I obviously love. I take interior decorating very seriously, which is another reason why I'm probably addicted to the game. It's very satisfying for me to see the before and after and the transformation, and it's probably very good for me because instead of redecorating my whole entire apartment, I can just do it on the app. Queer Eye promotes positivity, inclusivity, courage, and the LGBTQIA plus community, which is something that I'm very passionate about promoting on my channel. And so I'm really happy that they're collabing with this game. If you guys love the show or the guys over at Queer Eye and you're looking for a new game to get addicted to, Project Makeover is for you. So the link to download the game for free will be in my description. Thank you so much, Project Makeover. Thank you so much, that sponsor. Without you, I wouldn't have a livelihood. Okay, let's keep going. Best dressed 
Ashley. What's her last name? We don't know. Unless you're going too far on the internet and you don't respect people's boundaries. But you don't know, Ashley Best Dressed was a YouTuber who made fashion content, lifestyle, college related videos where she showed us different outfits that you can pair together, thrifting, how to upcycle different types of clothing pieces, and also just her everyday life living in Los Angeles. That was until she moved to New York City where um, something happened like March 2020 around like two years ago. I don't remember exactly what it was, but um, anyway, things decided to go downhill. Sorry, I'm just looking at my bed. And if that is what I think it is, and I'm really excited because I could use a snack. All right. I was eating snap peas in bed. Thank you, past me, for being a sloppy bitch. Anyway, the last video that Ashley has uploaded onto her YouTube channel was an apartment tour of her first New York City apartment and then announced that she was moving out very soon because she had a stalker. And that's the last that we've seen of Ashley on YouTube. She's kind of a little bit active still on Instagram. We'll do a brand deal here and there, still travels, still has friends, still lives in New York City. But something that her fans just simply cannot get over is the fact that she won't make a video and she won't address why she won't make a video. Essentially, most of the comments on her Instagram photos would be flooded with, when are you coming back to YouTube? Why do you not make YouTube videos anymore? You owe us an explanation as to why you haven't made a video in over a year. And that's kind of a common theme is that we deserve to know. I'll say I miss her videos so much. I miss Thursdays so much. I upload on Thursdays and I was like, I don't give a fuck about my own video. Today is best dress day. I couldn't help but think to myself every time I read one of these comments is, have we ever considered that maybe she herself doesn't know when she's gonna return to YouTube? Or perhaps there just isn't some grand explanation. I want it to be known even though I've been making YouTube videos on and off since I was like in the fifth grade. I am a consumer first and a content creator second. I am such a huge fangirl of so many people and I absolutely get wanting your favorite person, your comfort creator to come back online. But I think that we have this issue and I've had this issue in the past where we detach creators, especially female creators from being human beings. We look at them and say, they owe us something even if we have treated them poorly. Let me explain. I remember in 2020 and 2021, there was a huge surge in the problem with best dress videos. Whether the content within these videos were valid or not valid, I think it's safe to say for any human being, it would be very overwhelming to come back to a platform where you're not liked as much as you once were. I think something that I would ask myself is how I would feel if I moved to New York City two months before a pandemic that I did not know was going to happen. Becoming very depressed, I know this only because she's been open about it on her social media. Having a stalker come to your home, going through a shitty breakup, which she's also been open about online. And then on top of that, there are a bunch of videos about basically what's the problem with you. And they're all just reiterations of themselves. Uh, ask yourself if you would want to come back. Or maybe would it just kind of be a better decision for your mental health and overall well being? If you laid low, did the occasional Instagram ad, which by the way, pays very well, <laughs> and get to reap the benefits that come with social media, but instead live in pretty much complete privacy. I'll get back to that topic a little later. I relate to best dress because I too had a stalking ask situation. Did you know that in some states, a restraining order or a PFA does not exist? or especially if you don't have a romantic relationship with that person? Because I sure didn't until I was literally in the courtroom <laughs> and I was told that. I remember growing up and having YouTubers talk about stalker situations or their safety and I'm like, you're not that big of a deal, okay? You are not that big of a deal. You're literally on the internet. Until it happened to me, me who is not a big deal at all, unless you ask my mom that I'm a very big deal. It flipped my entire world upside down. I'm on medication for it. <laughs> I wasn't posting videos for a while and I know online it appeared like, oh, Nicole's getting lazy again, when in actuality I was like driving an hour out because I was too scared to shop in my hometown, um, buying items to protect myself. I went into like full gone girl bitch mode and I was like, 
I am not letting myself get hurt. Absolutely not. The way that I lived my life, let alone made content, changed so severely. It was from that point on where I made a decision that I was going to be so much more private with my life. I wouldn't go to certain events or do certain things if my location was going to be known. I went out in disguises. I wouldn't post certain things or go to certain places for the fear of someone knowing I was there. I wanted to move out ASAP, but I couldn't. I became such a severely paranoid person. The thought of even talking about my personal life on the internet no, I, I just didn't want to anymore. I was so deterred from it, especially because it was social media and my job that got me in that position in the first place. And stalkers aren't anything new at all. But I really, really relate to best dressed after that situation happened to me. Speaking of which, who else had a stalker early on in their career? I'm a Chamberlain. I'm a Chamberlain, queen of social media, on magazine covers, invited to red carpet events. We all know her blogger, lifestyle YouTuber, coffee company owner. She does it all. I think a lot of young girls who have started social media within the last five years have been influenced by Emma Chamberlain in one way or another and have seen her success and said, I want what she has because I know I have. The world went from loving her to hating her, loving her and hating her back and forth, back and forth. It's just like a cycle. It happens to everyone, but her a lot. It's just not normal for the human brain to like experience that. Uh, it's We're not built for that the same way that we're not built to read a lot of positive comments about herself or a lot of negative comments about herself. It's not normal to go through fluctuations where hundreds of thousands of people really, really like you or don't like you. I think we overlook that. Like for example, I saw a tweet the other day that was like, oh, we think that 100 likes is small, but if 100 people complimented you in one day, you'd be very overwhelmed. Think about it. I've kept up with her podcasts and her videos for years and years and years now, and I did come to a stop kind of a little before she kind of left on YouTube, just because it wasn't the kind of content I really wanted to consume, to be honest. I just don't think that her podcasts were really meant for me anymore, and that's okay. Honestly, sometimes people's podcasts make me so angry. I could love the person, but hearing their voice for like an hour, I'm like, shut up, shut up. It's also why I didn't do very good in college. Well, why I didn't do well in college. I can tell Emma Chamberlain more than anything wants to come off as genuine and relatable still to her young audience who is mostly young women. I think of this especially when she made a podcast episode about nine to five jobs. It's interesting because, I mean, she said it herself, she's never had a nine to five job. She's actually never had a job outside of social media. Of course, having your own coffee company is a job within itself, but she never had to work at Chipotle. She never had to clean diarrhea off walls every night at 11 p.m. It changes you. It like rewires your brain a little bit. And it would rub me the wrong way because I'm like, what can you possibly tell me in this hour long episode about something that you haven't experienced before, but many of us don't even get the choice but have to do in order to make a living. But then again, you have to reflect and ask yourself, how do we expect a young woman growing up online, literally your formative years are all online, to grow and grow and grow and grow and become practically celebrity status and still appeal to her young audience? When the reason that she got famous was for being a relatable young teenager who just got their driver's license and loved thrifting and loved going out with her friends and get coffee and do regular normal things. To now, when nothing about her life is really relatable at all anymore. And I want to emphasize, that's not really a bad thing. It just is. Before Emma left the internet, she chose to make a lot of videos in bed, talking about her experience with depression and anxiety. But it was also hard for a lot of people to consume this content when she was in a huge mansion and in a luxury car in a major city, getting all of her financial needs met. I'll be the first to say, money did not take away my OCD, PTSD, whatever the fuck else away. This is the most comfortable I've ever lived in my entire life and I may be the most mentally ill I've ever been in my life. But to a viewer, who may be experiencing similar emotions, but different circumstances, 
can be very jarring. Once again, speculation. I think to a certain extent, Emma Chamberlain is very strategic in the way that she chooses to show things because she will talk about from time to time being invited to, you know, the Met Gala and red carpet events. And I'm, I, she talks about it more on her podcast now, but she wouldn't vlog really any of those moments or going to these cool influencer events or, you know, going on tour with her very famous boyfriend. Like these are not things that she chooses to broadcast. She chooses to show the very little parts of her life which make her relatable, but then it can feel like a slap in the face to some of her very dedicated fans who are like, but you on the weekends get to go to these glamorous events and do these amazing things and go on vacation, but you choose not to show them. But then again, why would she show them? Because it kind of breaks the fourth wall and kind of loses that relatability. It almost becomes easier and smarter and even better for your career to show the more mundane parts of your life rather than the most interesting parts of your life for the sake of staying relatable. Which is interesting because a lot of YouTube is about showing the most interesting parts of your life and the best parts of your day, but Emma Chamberlain decides to show kind of like the worst parts of her day or the worst parts of her life in order to keep that connection with her audience. If you've been following me for a while, then you know my love for Claudia Saluski. I love Claudia Saluski so much, one of my favorite YouTubers of all time. However, I cannot really tell you the last time that I've watched a Claudia Saluski video, not because I don't love her, but because if I'm going through a hard time in my life, the last thing I really want to see is people really living it up and really enjoying their lives. I've done a good job at like kind of protecting myself and forming a bubble around me and I'm like, Nicole, you cannot watch that. That will be bad for your noggin. I love Claudia Slusky, and I'm sure one day I'll return to watching her videos. I think a lot of us can agree that in 2020, we spent a lot of our time in our homes watching content. All of us are in this together. We're all stuck at home, bullshit, whatever. It was like, oh my God, for the first time in my life, I don't have FOMO. And then people are out there living their lives again and being their luxurious best selves, good for them. Not all of us have really gotten to that point in our lives or feel the same way. And it's hard to watch that. I love Miss Claudia Slusky dearly. And I love that she gets to do these awesome things in her life. She's in a movie, her boyfriend's famous, goes on tours, meeting other famous people, music festivals, yada, yada, yada. I love that for her, but in order to protect my brain, I simply cannot consume that kind of content because it's not happening to me. Emma Chamberlain just said, I'm gonna cut that out for you guys and you'll only get a sneak peek. If you find out, you find out, but I'm not really gonna broadcast that part. And I think, I think she gets that. I think she knows her audience pretty well. She's a genius. I get it. And I too relate to the part of Emma Chamberlain wanting to be more private in her life, not because I'm, you know, getting sponsored by Cartier or anything like that, but just because I wanted to keep some special moments in my life private. I graduated college and I was like, oh my God, there's so much more to my life that I get to show online to the internet. But then when it came down to it, I was like, I don't really want to show this. I don't really want to show my romantic relationship with my boyfriend at five years because I just want to keep that to myself. I don't really want to film with my friends when I'm hanging out with them because I didn't get to hang out with anyone for like two years. And now I get to hang out with people and I just want to be in the moment and keep that to myself. I didn't really want to film my moving process because I was stressed the fuck out. Moving is so difficult and anyone who has ever made moving vlogs, what is in there that you have that I don't have? Because I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I recently got a comment saying that I, my recent content is a bit shallow because I'm choosing not to show the in-depth parts of my life. And that's okay. Shallow is the worst thing that I'm calling one day, then it's a good day, okay? I don't really care. But to a certain extent, I agree because there's so much more going on in my life that I choose not to show because I wanna keep it to myself. <laughs> But I am also growing up. I'm only about a year older than her. My interests are changing. I too go through mental health struggles. I'm experiencing new experiences. I'm meeting new people. I'm forming new relationships. And I just don't know if I want that broadcasted anymore. I think it's a collective of post-pandemic. I think it's a collective of having stalker issues. And I could go on and on about the sudden want for privacy online after we've had years of everything being broadcasted but i've seen more and more people online recently just go 
completely MIA. Honestly, I think it's kind of cool. Someone else that I want to talk about and throw in is Joanna Cedia. Big fan of her, loved her eczema content, I absolutely love her. If you don't know, Joanna Cedia made videos of her painting on her walls. She made vlogs. She just was a funny fucking content creator. And she too also decided to one day stop making content and delete all of her videos online. Pain, because I loved watching all her content. It was like comforting to put it on in the background. But something interesting that I noticed with the difference between Joanna Cedia leaving and not making videos anymore and best dress leaving and not making videos anymore is the entitlement in which we feel like we have towards best dressed much more than joanna like i said you could go into any of her photos or even her past videos and see plenty of comments being like you owe us an explanation why did you leave this is fucked up almost like anger towards her whereas the response that joanna got was a lot of support and hoping that she was okay and i try to kind of think about it like why like what is the difference like why did Joanna kind of get good feedback from her leaving while Best Dress didn't? And this is my little theory, but I think it's because Joanna decided to not monetize off of her content. I don't think I've ever seen Joanna do one sponsored video at all. From our understanding, Joanna wasn't exactly raking in the money from her YouTube videos. Whereas we saw Best Dressed from her first videos go from a cramped apartment where she was living with like eight other girls and sharing a bedroom with a few other people to then YouTube completely changing her life where she could support herself financially in New York City, which is not inexpensive at all. <laughs> and that's when it kind of clicked for me. We really feel entitlement towards these women when we feel like we have given them everything that they have. Emma Chamberlain announced that she was taking a break from YouTube videos. Best Dress didn't. And Joanna Cedia didn't. And I think that this is kind of where it goes back to my thinking that we detach creators, especially women, from being human beings. They owe us something, especially if we have helped them build their success. Even if we didn't single-handedly give them our dollar, we gave them our view, which equates to money. If we gave them that, then they owe us something in return. Do we feel less entitled to Joanna Cedia giving us an answer as to why she left because we didn't really give her our money? Would we feel entitled to more answers and more videos from her had she monetized all of her videos and had sponsorships within all of her videos and we saw her enjoying her wealth and living that out? It seems like we, as a society. We don't really want to see it girls win that much, you know? Like they can win, but not enough to the point where they're not relatable and not enough to the point where they're well known about that they suddenly become kind of like celebrities and not to the point of them, you know, owning property or having enough money for financial stability for them and their family. But we also don't want them to have privacy. And, and if they choose to have some sort of privacy, we must invade it. It's almost like it's nice or satisfying to see when people are not making that much money off their work, not really reaping the consequences of the hours that they put in. And if they do decide to leave for personal reasons, we may be more understanding as a community. Since we are more so focusing mainly on women because that's really kind of the only content that I watch on YouTube is actually women, which is really funny because the music that I listen to is almost like all men. That's my fatal flaw. I tried to think of any other male creators who decide to leave from the platform and whether or not they faced repercussions, I guess. Um, and my boyfriend actually mentioned Casey Neistat. Um, who decided to leave and announced that he was, you know, taking a break, moving to Los Angeles for a slower pace of life uh, because he wanted to be there for his family more. And that seemed to be pretty well respected and pretty well deemed. I don't think Casey Neistat faces much backlash for that at all. So is it the issue that we as a community are angry when people don't give us an explanation that we feel like we are owed? Is that we feel that we are owed an explanation because we are part of the reason that we brought them success? And it is just something to think about. And I can't help but when I read these comments when they're very much so like, 
You were so open once and you were not so private once. Why are you still not as open? Why are you not giving us what we wanted? You once gave us everything we wanted. Why are you still not giving us what we wanted? I personally just can't help but think of when we give consent and when people think that that consent cannot be revoked. Just because you said yes once does not mean that is yes all the time. And I think that should be applied for anything. If someone chooses to stop sharing their life with us, I don't think it's fair for us to expect or make it known and shame others for not wanting to still be open. I think the mentality that we are owed anything, especially to young women, is very icky. And I don't like that. It girls will continue to come and go on the internet. There will continue to be people who will blow up the Charlie D'Amelios, the Emma Chamberlains, the best dress. And one day they will blow up, uh, figuratively, not literally, Jesus. One day they will blow up and one day they will get tired and one day they will realize that they want their privacy. And honestly, good for them for drawing that boundary. I'm in full support of people being young or any age, making a shit ton of money, investing it, and then living a life of privacy and doing whatever the hell you want. Because clearly the lifestyle that is normal, the nine to fives, capitalist society that we're in, it's not normal, it just isn't, and it's not working out for anyone. It's not sustainable or livable, and, and we, we clearly see that from the last two plus years. We, we've seen that forever. To all the future it girls, you go girl. Make all your money, invest it, live on the little farm that you always wanted. I can't tell you how many times I have just driven on little farms where they have a little cow and a little pony, and I'm like, that's what I wanna do so fucking bad. I don't know how to take care of a cow, but I will learn. If there's one thing that I hope that you take from this video, it's to not glorify online folks. Don't glorify anyone, don't glorify me because I will disappoint you at one point or another. Will I continue to ignore my own advice and glorify a 43 year old man and drive four hours there and back just to meet him? Yeah, I will. And that's my fatal flaw. I know that this video isn't exactly like a video essay, but I do want to continue making more videos like this where the focus isn't solely on me or my life, even though I spent a lot of it talking about myself. Oopsie. I plan on doing a Stranger Things season four video. I'm very inspired by Trin Lavelle on her videos on commentary on movies and TV shows. And I spent a lot of time watching her the last few weeks. Uh, and I just been Stranger Things, and I wanna make different style videos and just dip my little toes in, and I'm not gonna show you my toes again. Anyway, subscribe if you wanna be nasty, if not, you're disgusting. Also, make sure they leave this video a like, cause it helps me out so much. Also, comment any other topics that you want me to talk about in the future, whether you like this video or not. Tell me that you glorify me in the comments, okay? If you wanna subscribe to my other social media, it's just at Nicole Raffi. And if you wanna follow me on my TikTok, where my cat is famous, it's at Nikki Nasty. I'm gonna go now, cause I need to reassure with my mom that I'm still an it girl in her eye. Actually, we should just ask her. It's almost midnight. She's gonna be worried about me. Hello. Speech? Yeah. Okay. Do you know so's not your it girl? Yeah. It girl? To is Tajifchina. Like Angelina Jolie was an it girl. Oh. Do you think I'm an it girl? Uh -huh. Really? Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, we'll do it sometime.